Shiloh family and friends, the Shiloh vision is making Christ central in the congregation, community, and in creation. Our church theme for 2023 is co-laboring with God for increase. These are our church announcements. Summertime has arrived and things are heating up here at Shiloh. As we enter into July and August, we will have 90 minutes of power each Sunday. You will want to attend casually dressed and come ready to praise and worship our God. Receive the power that is needed to take summer by storm. A shout out to everyone who is celebrating a birthday in the month of July. May all your future plans be blessed by God. Happy birthday. Stay connected to all of the exciting happenings here at Shiloh. Be sure to check our website, www.shilohedgemere.org, and check your inbox for our email blast. Remember, we are co-laboring with God for increase in 2023. Have a blessed and amazing week.
you dear friends thank you so much for sharing with us right in the middle of the week with our midweek matter i don't know about you but whenever i go out to a restaurant and the food is delicious i have no problem in putting up not only the money for the bill but also for the tip psalm 34 and 8 says oh taste and see 
that the Lord is good. And I believe that today by his word, it's going to be something good for your heart, your mind, your soul, and your life. So toward that end, I encourage all of us to certainly give that indeed the ministry might go forth in strength and power. God bless you and enjoy this midweek manna. Good afternoon and welcome to Midweek Manor. The associate ministers of the Shiloh Baptist Church of Baltimore County come each week so that we may provide a word of inspiration that will help us get through the week. Listen, I would like for each of you who are watching right now to do me a favor and share the link. Take the YouTube link if you're on Facebook and share it out to others so they too would be able to Dine with us at this table as God has given us a word in the midst of this week. To God be the glory. Well, our text today is going to come from John, the 8th chapter of John. I'll be reading the 31st through the 36th verses, and I'll be reading the New Revised Standard Version. And that's John 8, 31 through 36, and it reads this way. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, verily I say, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. Just for a moment in our midweek uh, moment for this week, I, I like to share from the title, Be Free. My brothers and sisters, if, you, uh, if we were to be honest about both here in our communities and within our country, we all would agree that there seems to be a different perspective or maybe a misunderstanding about what freedom really means. The reality is that what we may call independence or freedom has been expressed differently by people based on what they perceive as being free. For some, freedom has been defined as no longer being enslaved or in bondage. Uh, for others, freedom is having the opportunity to do whatever they choose to do. Yes, yeah, some may feel and think just a remnant that because you have the ability to do whatever you feel you may do or whatever the season may call for you to do, that that in fact is defined as freedom. But let me share just a couple of things with us on this midweek manner experience that having the ability to do whatever we so choose is not the definition of freedom. My God, uh, uh, who's here listening today that can testify to the fact that doing things your own way. Freedom has nothing to do with the ability for us to choose. Dr. King said it this way, freedom is never given voluntarily by the oppressor. Uh, uh, it must be demanded by the oppressed. In other words, freedom will not happen by osmosis or even by the ev evolution, but something that must be demanded by those who are impacted the most. My brothers and sisters, when I look at the surrounding community here in Edgemere and others where uh, uh, we are, where God's children are, we must understand that we can't get complacent with what we see uh, in our communities. We, we can't be uh, happy with seeing poverty and, and things that are happening to impact our community. Uh, those who know the power of prayer have seen the evidence of God's work in the land of the living and at some juncture of this community journey, we'll have to demand that we invoke the spirit of freedom and independence from all of the things that seem to have us bound within our communities. If that, if that ministers to you, put it in the chat, uh, freedom, freedom. Freedom is different for different people. And yes, it's important for us to demand freedom from the bondage, uh, uh, from bondage of those who are oppressed, but being free in God's is God's will for our lives. Oh, let's, let's stay there. Being free is, in fact, 
God's will for our lives. Well, let's, let's, let's look at the text because in the text, Jesus is giving us the real definition of what freedom really is. Jesus took the time to define freedom, and uh, he was talking to the Jews more, uh, particularly the Bible says, Jews who believed in him. Yeah. Uh, Jesus often talked to the Jews, which uh, was a part of his community, but his audience were those who, who, who believed that he, in fact, was the son of God. Uh, uh, th th there was a bit of a di dilemma here because in the text uh, is important for us to see uh, uh, because although they were considered uh, those who were following him, uh, the Messianic Jews, they seem to be a little confused about Jesus's true definition of what being free really meant. Here lies the tension in our text uh, because one would think that just knowing and believing who Jesus is, is in fact a part of us considering ourselves being free. But Jesus took the time to teach all of us a valuable lesson that I think is important for us to know in our midweek experience. And, 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 and so the Jews who followed him, and, and I know some are asking, uh, 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 I'm saved, uh, and it is uh, in my life I received Jesus. I walked the aisle, I gave the preacher my hand, and, and so in fact I am set free because I believe that Jesus is the way. Yes, that, that is a, a, a way, but Jesus is saying that that's not only uh, what it is that I want to share. And today I want to leave a couple of things just, just to share with you. But freedom cannot manifest in our lives until we are, are, are willing to be discipled. Yes, 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 yes. Willing to be discipled, uh, Jesus tells the Messianic Jews, uh, the Jews that believed in him, in verse 30 and 31, it says, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. It's important for us to note that being a disciple is not a form of oppression. I, I feel like I need to share that uh, because if you have a little barbershop talk or maybe in the salon, or if you go uh, to other places, for some reason, people believe that, that uh, uh, submitting ourselves to what it is God is sharing as us following him in uh, discipleship, that that is a part of oppression. And here it is. We want to uh, clear that out of the atmosphere, even in our time, that discipleship has nothing to do with bondage. My God. In fact, being a disciple of Jesus Christ is, in fact, the way to freedom because it is in God's will that he would want us to be free. And the only way that we can be free is if we're willing to be discipled. Look at someone or share it in the chat. God wants us to be free. God, God wants us to be free. I, I enjoy the fireworks. We, we are uh, uh, just in the month of August, and uh, July is one of my favorite times of the year. We see fireworks, and we, we celebrate the fireworks. Uh, we, we celebrate Juneteenth and all that it represents. And yes, there's a place to, represent, to, to be remembered about what we have a, as a people have gone through. But how can we celebrate freedom when we're not really free? My God, we have to be free by first being disciple. And the celebration of being disciple in this season is greater than just the hot dogs on the grill, the pool, and all of those other great things that we celebrate customary here in America. But being free is, is, is embracing that which God is sharing us and what Jesus is teaching us in the text today. People of God, we have to get to the point where our faith in Christ becomes uncompromisable, that our testimony testimonies should share for God we will live and yes for God we will certainly die being free in him means us embracing the principles the love languages that he shared the examples and what he is sharing here in the text to be free means to to take the testimony of Joshua that says as for me and my household we will serve the Lord uh, David said it this way I'd fainted unless I have believed to see See uh, uh, the goodness of the Lord and in the here in the land of the living. Well, if we're willing to be discipled, the next thing that we have to do is recognize that true freedom cannot manifest 
or unless we realign our own definitions of freedom and become in alignment with God's purpose for our lives. Verse 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They had their own definition of freedom. Uh, uh, Jesus shared uh, what it was to be free, but in that moment, even though they believed him, uh, uh, they responded by saying, well, well, Jesus, you, 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 you may not know who we are. Let, let me tell you who we are, Jesus, because we've never been enslaved to anybody. And no, no, we are the descendants of Abraham. It, it sounds like uh, someone who may have been to church all their lives. I, uh, uh, you may not know, Minister A.J., how long I've been in the church. I, I know who I am, and, and I've never been in anyone's uh, slave house. I've never been enslaved because I've been following Jesus all my life. My God, but, but people of God, we need to be reminded uh, that our resumes, uh, our lineage, who we come from, and even how long that we've been here in the church has absolutely nothing to do with where it is that God is trying to take us. It, it has nothing to do with that. And Jesus continued to teach by saying in 34, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. And I know discipleship is, is, a, is a hard term to say in the church. I, I know sin is a hard term to talk about uh, in the church. But Jesus wanted us to know that you can follow me and still sin. My God. Uh, you can still commit sin and be a slave to sin. But, but, but it's not just that you follow me. It's not that you just uh, are willing to be discipled. But that you recognize that sin is something that can enslave you and keep you from being free. And so Jesus wanted them to know that, yes, uh, 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 just following me is just not enough. Uh, uh, that, that, that we must continue to understand that, that he uh, 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 didn't want to waste his divine time explaining the bondage of sin to the believers. But he, he knew that, yeah, sometimes believers, we do too sin. And I know this is not a shouting moment or something for us to celebrate. But if we are going to be truly free, we have to evaluate that which we do and what we think and all the things that we are uh, uh, that keep us separated from God. <laughs> because separation from us and God, in fact, is a form of slavery. My God, that, in fact, is a form of, of misrepresenting what freedom really is. And Jesus wanted us to know not first to be discipled, but recognize that, yes, to be uh, enslaved in sin, in fact, is uh, uh, one of which that God is sharing to be in bondage, but lastly, uh, we have to acknowledge that the only freedom that really matters is freedom in Jesus Christ. My God, my time is up. I, I, I want you to know that uh, following Jesus and, in fact, that being discipled by Jesus and recognizing that there are some traps that the enemy would put forth from us so that we don't have access to God because his will is for us to live free, but live free through his will because in his will, uh, uh, all things are possible through Jesus Christ. It's nothing that we can accomplish if we follow Jesus and follow what he has given us and do what it is that God has called us to do. But once we embrace that Jesus is not just the God of, uh, I, I, I've given my life to sin, saying John 3, 16, shaking the preacher's hand, but that it takes a deeper level of commitment to find the level of freedom. We may see the fireworks, the, the certificate is doing well on my wall, but how is it that I live free and that is to listen and and read and be a part of what it is Jesus is calling us to do in this season people of God we have to know and tell and share the story that it's not enough just to say that I love Jesus and that I'm a Christian oh my God we've been doing that for generations but if we are going to come to this place where God wants to use us in places that he's never used us if we're gonna come to the place where God's gonna take us to places we've never seen if we're gonna meet people who need to know who Jesus is 
if we're going to go to the place where God wants us to take uh, uh, the world by storm so that we don't have to be complacent with what we see here and there, we got to be discipled and be ready to do what God has called us to do. My God, let us look with inside ourselves. Let us look around us. Let us survey what it is that is kind of trying to keep us in this comfortable box area. God wants us to be free. To be free is to say, for God I live. And, and for God, I die. And so Jesus himself didn't allow those who were teaching in his time to put him in a box based on his lineage. The disciples had their explanation of who they were. But apparently they didn't understand that Jesus himself knew who he was. And yet he still wanted to say, uh, 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 for who I set free through the will and the way of which we are preparing even today. That that place is a place of joy, a place of restoration, reconciliation, and all of those things, if you just follow me. Because I'll set you free. I'll set you free from the pain. I'll, I'll set you free from the heartache. I'll, I'll set you free from that which is bothering you from day to day. And so, people of God, I don't know what you came on our Wednesday experience with. But I, I don't want us to be uh, 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 so used to God that we feel we need to go through and God is with us. Let's take a moment right now to put those worries and things on the altar. Yes, virtually even now we can pray until God shows up in our situation. We're praying, God, that you would release us from that which has a strong grip on our lives. It may not be us, God, but maybe someone who we love. Our children, that grip, God, we want them to be free. God, we want you to minister to the places and the areas that seem to have, the enemy seems to have a stronghold on them. We're praying for freedom even now. That our freedom is not defined by that which the government says, but we take a day off and that we may uh, refresh even in those moments. But true freedom and the real celebration happens when those who do not know you as their Lord and Savior come to the place in their hearts to receive the gift of salvation. And even through that gift, God, that they may continue to follow you and continue to share your word and continue to bless others by the testimonies that are yet to come. God, we want to live free in this season. But God, we can't be free without you. So thank you for dying on Calvary. Thank you for setting us free by what you did on the cross. Because God, believing in you that you came, you lived, you died, and you rose in three days is just the start of our journey to freedom. Thank you, Lord, for the push. Thank you for those who are praying. Thank you, God, for our pastor. Thank you for our first lady. Thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to know that when we hear the truth, the truth of what you did on Calvary, the truth of who our Jesus and Lord and Savior is, that the truth will help to set us free. We embrace those truths on today, God. We thank you for your presence and we thank you, God, for your love. Continue to be with Shiloh, Brown's Chapel, every church person represented today. May these midweek manner experiences go beyond that which is in the YouTube or Facebook. But God, that it would resonate in someone's heart that they may be feeling the pull and the nudge to come closer to you. That you're not a seasonal God, that you don't take summers off, God. But what you do, God, is that you are there ever present waiting with your arms stretched until we recognize, God, that what we're looking for is through you, God. We thank you, God, for this moment. We appreciate and we love you. God, I don't understand why you love us so, but you do. And so we thank you, God, for all you continue to do in this season. Bless our church home. Bless our families, God. You know the need. And as we intercede now for those who are looking for you in some dark places, God, who are looking to be free, allow our time together today. Uh, just incorporate, bring those, God, who need you in just an uh, uh, in, uh, intimate way that, God, they too would be set free. We thank you, God, and we love you, and we thank you for this opportunity. And it is in your name, Christ Jesus, that we do pray. 
and we say amen and amen. God bless you. Please spread the word. Midweek Matter every Wednesday right here on our Shiloh Facebook and YouTube page. God bless you. You have a wonderful day in the Lord.